Hello, so I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about Chapter 12, Writing Reader-Focused Letters, Memos, and Emails. And Chapter 12 provides information and examples for writing professional letters, memos, and emails. One of the most important points the chapter emphasizes is that, is that you need to have your reader and purpose in mind when writing any type of correspondence. Be sure to use the correct and appropriate format for with whichever type of correspondence you are writing. For example, if you are writing a letter, you will first want to make sure you are using the stationery with your company's letterhead. Also, you will need to include your address, if not already included, in the letterhead, the address of the person you are writing to, and the date of the correspondence. You will use a customary greeting and write the letter with white space and chunking. See the examples of the different types of letters in the chapter. For memos, you will use a memo heading, which will include to, from, subject, and date. Watch your alignment when using the headings. Follow the examples provided in Chapter 12. For an email, you will insert the sendee's email address in the field to. You will also have a CC field and a BCC. In the CC, which means carbon copy field, you will fill the email address of the people who need to be in the loop of the conversation. BCC is for people you want to have as a witness of the correspondence for documentation purposes. Always include a specific subject line in all emails. When corresponding, decide if you should use the direct or indirect approach. The indirect approach is appropriate if you need to convey information that may displease or shock the reader. For the indirect approach, you would include a buffer paragraph to ease into the information more gently. In all correspondence, be tactful, clear, specific, and professional. Avoid phrases such as ASAP and as soon as possible, because with, with busy professionals, as soon as possible is rarely possible. Instead, give a specific due date. Also avoid thanking your reader in advance, as this implies that you are presuming they will agree to do as you ask, but to the reader it feels like they are being put into a corner. Read the chapter for other common phrases that are overused or create adverse feelings in the reader. Chapter 14, Writing Reader-Focused Informal Report. Chapter 14 discusses the different types of informal reports you may encounter in the work world. The most common informal reports are directives, progress reports, and meeting minutes. Directives explain a policy or procedure. Progress reports describe the status of an ongoing project. Meeting minutes are the official record of a meeting. Be sure to make a note of the required sections of each of these reports and look over the examples provided in the chapter. Especially pay attention to the progress reports and meeting minutes for the purpose of this week's assignment. Your task for this lesson is to write an informal report in the format of a memo. You can choose between writing a progress report or writing meeting minutes. If you choose to write a progress report, You'll be writing about your progress made toward attaining your educational or career goal. You'll describe your long and short-term goals and what you have accomplished in the past and particularly this semester towards reaching this goal. Also describe what you expect to accomplish in the next few semesters or years. If you choose to write the meeting minutes, you will watch the video included in the lesson and write meeting minutes for the meeting in the video. You will need to invent names for the people in the meeting as they do not take roll call in the video. Report on the main agenda topics, who discusses what, any votes taken or decisions made, any follow-up tasks assigned, and if known, the date and time of the next meeting. Follow the examples in Chapter 14.